Can you hear me now? <laughs> Welcome to another summer service at the Universalist Unitarian Church of Peoria. Our minister is Reverend Jennifer Innes, and as is the custom of our minister every year, they have the majority of the summer off. That's when I get to do my work. She will be returning to the pulpit August 18th with plans to do the uh, blessing of the animals, followed by her tradition questions service, and a service focusing on democracy on September 1. Our 24-25 church year will officially begin with our water and gathering service. Uh, as a public announcement, current community risk for Peoria County is categorized as low, according to the COVID Act Now org website. Masks are optional. However, COVID is still out there. We know because the president's got it. Uh, we had a family come back from vacation and bring COVID as a souvenir. So uh, with all the summer travel, the virus can spread quickly. So please, if you're showing any symptoms, stay home. Please test. There are still free tests that can be available on the covidgov.test or slash test website. Uh, during the summer, our services are a bit different. And this service will be about the most different service I've ever conducted. Uh, our services are lay-led, and the main message is delivered by a member or friend. Today, the main message is going to be delivered by you guys. Uh, next week, our, uh, we'll welcome Kai Wiest, who will speak on the topic of gender and its intersections. So summer's a time for us to try new things. Today, we are trying an experiment called T-shirt theology. You've all been invited to wear a t-shirt or to bring a shirt with you. And later in the service, you'll be invited to come sit up in the front rows and then one by one, come over to the microphone and tell us about your t-shirt. The goal of this service is for the congregation to get to know some of our members in a way they would not have gotten to know them before. You may learn you share an interest or an experience with someone that you've not met yet you might learn a little bit more about what someone believes. Newcomers will learn a little bit more about how the you use in this church view the world. The hope is to strengthen that interconnected web of life as it's stated in one of our UU values. And hopefully, we'll have some fun. I want to welcome all of you that are joining us. Some of you are here in the sanctuary. Some are at home live streaming this service on Facebook. And through the magic of YouTube, some will be streaming this sometime in the future. Seems like time travel. No matter how you join us, everyone is welcome here. Regardless of your race, ethnic background, gender, economic status, your abilities, your politics, you're welcome. We welcome your ideas your questions, your energy. We welcome your beliefs, your knowledge, your point of view. We welcome your conversation, your participation, your wisdom. We find strength in our diversity. And I know this is true because I have a t-shirt that says, we find strength in our diversity. So it must be true. Our current church building was dedicated in October of 2005. Next year, the building will be 20 years old. And in 2025, it's also a milestone for Reverend Jennifer's ministerial life. I think we're going to have some parties in the next year. There are a lot of things in a building that's 20 years old that start to break down. Unfortunately, we have had something break down. We don't have any hot water at the moment. Our hot water heater died. So luckily, our dishwasher has a sanitizing feature that heats its own water. So we know our dishes are going to be clean. But we don't have ha uh, hot water in the bathrooms to wash your hands. So we've got extra hand sanitizer in all the places you might need hot water. 
Our church stands on 15 acres of woods. Much of it is unusable. Now, why would we be a piece, buy a piece of land where most of it was unusual? Well, that's because we're trying to keep it in its original state. The uh, evidence of this is in our uh, strong feeling that nature must be honored and protected. We recognize that this was once the ancestral land of the Peoria people. They were here long before the first Europeans came down the river. We celebrate them for who they were and who they are today. Now would be a good time to turn your devices to worship mode, otherwise known as silent. Um, tech, can I get this TV turned on? Thank you. There's a slide that they will show you that will help you turn it off. And I know that if there's anyone under the age of 13, they know how to do it just in their very bones and soul. Uh, I do want to recognize that some of us cannot shut our phones off because our phones are becoming used more and more for uh, medical monitoring. So if someone's phone goes off, give them some grace. They may have a low insulin level or something. Uh, we have a number of things to help make you more comfortable today. There are hearing assist devices, a child safe area where children can play quietly, and toddlers can enjoy tummy time. There are fidgets to borrow in the baskets at the back. So if there's anything we can do to make your worship experience more pleasant, please let us know. Please wear your name tag so that we can get to know each other. After the service, you can join us in Fellowship Hall. I've been told there are about two or three tables that will be there for coffee hour. Preparations for the sale have already started. That's why you see so much in the church uh, with uh, things getting ready. And there's room outside on the patio uh, to get your coffee as well. Coffee and conversation is one of my favorite things to do on a Sunday. And if you are new to us, I can guarantee you will have a warm welcome. Now I'd like to ask Lindy to come forward and tell us more about the rummage sale. Good morning. Uh, so the key night among you will notice that there are a few things out of place today. Uh, we are in the middle of rummage sale setup. So just a few uh, announcements for you guys. We are still accepting donations. Wednesday is the last day. So I know I still have stuff to bring in Wednesday. No later. We will turn you away. Uh, we are also still taking signups for volunteers, especially for the sale days. That's Friday and Saturday. Um, there is on the sign-up table in the atrium, we have a sign-up. A week from today, we're doing cleanup. So anyone who wants to come help with that would be much appreciated. We always go out for Mexican and margaritas afterwards, so it's a pretty good time. The other notice is you guys are welcome to browse and look, but we have not finished pricing, so we're not selling anything yet, um, with the exception of the furniture, because it's nice to get it moved out of here. So if you see anything in the atrium, got a price on it, you're interested, Come find me, come find Bernie, uh, and we can work it out. So that's it, and hopefully we'll see you guys when we have our sale. Thanks. We are a vibrant and active church. We've got classes, committees, meetings, groups, and rummage sales. If you can't find a group that meets your needs, suggest a new one. If you can't uh, think of anything, just pay attention to the builder and maybe something will come along. The builder's our monthly newsletter. Uh, to stay in the know, I would like to encourage you all to read the builder. Look at the Friday flock note that will come out in your uh, email. Uh, there are notices on all kinds of social media sites and you can see the greeters to get uh, on the distri distribution list for one or all of those. I find it really frustrating when I'm sitting in coffee hour and somebody says, 
Oh, I didn't know about that. And I think, how can you not? We sent you a flock note. We sent you the builder. But those are the ways you won't be able to say that because you'll be in the know. Now I'd like to invite Regina Stanley, our membership director, to the podium to tell us about a class she's teaching after church today. Good morning. Um, so last week we kicked off the uh, New Faith Forward curriculum um, that we began. Jesse started it with the Beyond Inquirer series, and they talked about what do you use believe. Um, today I'm kicking off the Inquirer series, which is for um, newcomers, um, actually anybody, you know, and even if you've been around a while, you're welcome. Um, today we will do a campus tour and orientation. Um, I will show you all the spaces um, around here for use and share a little bit of history of our church. Um, because of the rummage sale, we will meet in here um, about noon. So you can grab some coffee and talk, and then we'll meet in here. And uh, just uh, keep an eye on the, the newsletters for the upcoming um, classes. We'll have something almost every week between the two of us. So um, it should be um, a, a, great, a great series. So hope to see you there. Now let's enter into worship with our opening hymn, number 361, Enter, Rejoice, and Come In. Please stand as you are willing and able. like to invite Anthony Boudreau to come give us opening words this morning. Come, come, whoever you are, by Melanie Morrell Insmerger. Come, come, whoever you are, you are welcome here. No matter your age, your size, the color of your eyes, your hair, your skin, you are welcome here. No matter how you came here, if you came alone or with others, you are welcome here. No matter whom you love or how you speak or whatever your abilities, you are welcome here. Whether you come with laughter in your heart or tears in your eyes, you are welcome here. If you come here with an open mind, a loving heart, and willing hands, then you are indeed welcome here. Dave Grebner will now light our chalice. Under the right circumstances, playing with fire is a delight. Imagine being gathered around a fire pit as the crackling flames invite us to sing, dance, and roast a marshmallow or two. Our chalice also invites us to play 
although with ideas rather than marshmallows. The flame encourages us to explore who we are, who our neighbors are, and where we are on our spiritual journey. Today we light this chalice in the spirit of play. Let us trust the light to guide us in this hour and in the days to come, finding joy along the way. We are joined today by our many friends, members, and visitors. Some are here with joy in their heart, some with tears in their eyes. Some are joining us feeling relief, some are experiencing worry. Some are feeling grateful, some are feeling lost. This morning, we light candles to mark these milestones in our lives. I will light the first candle from the chalice, and then you are invited to come and light a candle of your own.
we want to offer condolences correctly this week to Bill Ordaz. He's lost two first cousins, one unexpectedly. Uh, he lost Rudy Ordaz from Blue Island, Chicago, and Michelle Ordaz from Indiana. I want to congratulate our uh, rummage sale workers. They are doing a wonderful job. I'm sure we'll have a successful sale. And be sure to come and buy, buy. I have three things I bought at a rummage sale that I'm putting back into the rummage sale. So we're gonna make double profits on those. <laughs> be sure to shop the sale. It's the 26th and the 27th. And I'd also like to share that uh, Bernie Humphrey published some pictures this morning of an early shopper. She was watching out in the uh, uh, area, patio area. And we had a groundhog that was coming up and looking to see what he could see. I don't think he had any change or any dollars to buy anything, but it was interesting to watch him. You may want to warn your kiddos that when a, an, a wild animal like that comes up to a building, sometimes there might be something a little bit wrong with them, so they need to stay back and just watch. Now, can we have a moment of silence to mark those things that we carry in our hearts but remain unspoken? And now, as our custom dictates, we will send our children back to RE. Their, uh, their children and their helpers will exit the sanctuary and go to the religious education wing. Lessons during the summer are held in a kind of a one-room schoolhouse format. And the theme today is recycled art. Please join me in singing the children to class. Several years ago, our Sunday collection began a custom called Share the Plate. It's our custom here, and it's practiced all around the country by many union churches. This allows one half of the cash offering from our Sunday collection plate to go to a charity. The charities are selected because they share in our UU values. This month, our Share the Plate recipient is East Bluff Community Center Food Pantry. The pantry operates four Saturdays a month. Guests select from a variety of food items and then receive a prepared bag along with a choice of meat and dessert. Residents of this low-income area and a number of unhoused individuals are served. Breakfast is prepared by the Peoria area humanists and are served to the guests while they wait for their turn in the pantry. Guests can currently use the pantry twice a month. They receive no government funding and depend on donations of product and funds and is staffed slowly by volunteers. You may put, a, put cash or a check in the offertory plate or put your donation in an envelope and indicate if it's for a pledge, split with the charity, or if the conduct should go directly to the food pantry. Each donation of time, energy, and finances support the mission of this church and as a way of you showing your commitment to our liberal religious tradition. I thank you for your generosity. Will the ushers please come forward and collect the offertory?
real sure where I first heard about a service called T-Shirt Theology, but I've wanted to try it ever since. The Reverend Karen Bringleson recorded a sermon with this name, and she's at the UU People's Church of Cedar Rapids and was a guest speaker. I think she was the first service I was ever in front of the pulpit with a long time ago. She labeled it a seemingly difficult to talk about finding the meaning of things, and that her listeners didn't need to have a course in theology or philosophy to find meaning. You use who are doing theology, which I found that phrase interesting. I've always thought of studying theology or learning about theology, but she says doing theology. We bring to that our own experiences and reasoning. We explore the big questions in life, and we do it together. It is, not, it is my belief that not all T-shirts fit the category of doing theology, but almost all T-shirts tell you something about the person wearing it. I wonder what you've learned about me, because these are all my T-shirts. <sighs> And they do tell you something about me. One thing I'm sure you figured out by now, I don't like to iron. T-shirts can be a keepsake of a special event. I have one that I will always cherish. My granddaughter invited me to go with her to see the total eclipse. And we sat in the grandstand at the uh, Indianapolis Speedway together and had the, watched the total eclipse, and of course, bought t-shirts. Uh, a t-shirt can proclaim to the world a sports team you, you like. I don't have a single sports team up here. Uh, a t-shirt can be a funny gift. I once had a friend who after dinner would collect the plates and take all the gristle and leftovers that are on a plate, put them all on one, set it on the floor, and call his dogs over. And his dogs would lick that plate clean. He'd say, this one doesn't have to go in the dishwasher now. And his wife would turn bright red and say, yes, it will. Well, later, I came across a t-shirt that was perfect for him. The t-shirt had a dishwasher. It had dirty dishes piled up all over. And it had a dog in the front. And the caption said, you might just be a redneck if your dog doubles as your dishwasher. <laughs> he was so thrilled with that T-shirt. Uh, his wife helped me hide it under the tree on Christmas Day, and it said from Santa, but he figured it out. And he wore that T-shirt all day Christmas and then had it framed and put in his dining room. A t-shirt can show people's membership in a group. How many of us have the UU Church t-shirt, the gray one down there? That identifies us as being a part of this church. It displays that we're liberal. I have displayed all these t-shirts from my collection and some reference music. There's Three Dog Night, The Beatles, some of these uh, T-shirts that I have left at home are for school events. For my granddaughters, I started something special a long time ago. I have their onesies that when Caleb was born, it said, I'm the little sister. And her sister's onesie said, I'm the big sister. And they each have these in a pile at home, all the way up to their T-shirts from when they graduated from high school. And one of these days, this procrastinator is going to get them made into a t-shirt quilt. I, I have a story I forgot to put in my sermon, but t-shirts can sometimes be embarrassing. Um, I grew up in Council Bluffs, Iowa, and when I was growing up, there were two very prominent, meaning-rich families in town. There were the Peoples family. That was their name, Peoples, and they ran a department store. He also had a number of other businesses. And my brother Jeff worked for them. One year, <laughs> the owner gave them all t-shirts 
that had the name of the company on the front. He didn't think there was anything wrong with it, but the, the logo said, People's Natural Gas. He, he wore it on a visit to us years ago, and we were out at Wildlife Prairie Park, and there were people that asked him about that T-shirt all the time. And his wife said, next time I'm packing for him, he's not bringing that. Uh, one of the reasons why I have so many T-shirts up here, or new ones, is because I lost a lot of weight after the pandemic, and my T-shirts were all way too big for me. So I know I needed to buy some new ones. And I decided to use, get some t-shirts that reflected my faith. So I went to Cafe Press and Redbubble sites, and I found the UU t-shirts that you see ahead, up here. I started wearing them most of the time because they were some of the only clothes I had that fit. And an interesting thing started happening. People asked about them. People started stopping me in the street, and especially the uh, we're, all, we're home, and they would ask me about that. Where's that church at? What do they believe? Uh, I had a visiting nurse come to the house, and she called. She was, I was her last appointment of the day. She called home and said, I'm going to be late. I'm having the best conversation with this woman. I'll be there soon. Go ahead and start dinner. So she stayed probably an hour past our, her appointed time. She made it clear that she was a member of a very large church, but she was fascinated with what I had to tell her about ours. Now I've started carrying some other things with me. I have business cards for the church, the What You Use Believe cards, and I'm going to start carrying some of the bookmarks that the church uses for giveaways. While watching the sermon that Reverend Bringle did last on YouTube, she referred to an article by the Reverend Meg Riley. It was titled, T-Shirt Evangelism. I have declared my T-shirt wearing self to be a UU evangelist. I had said that a long time ago, but it was so nice to have it confirmed by a UU minister. Now at this point of the service, I wanted to sing, but I didn't know what to sing. I kept going through the hymnal, and nothing seemed appropriate. So I decided I was going to look to my UU t or to my T-shirt collection to find a song, and I am wearing my "Joy to the Fishes in the Deep Blue Sea." So I'm sure by now you guessed what song I'm going to sing. Please, uh, while we are singing the song. Kathy will accompany us on the guitar. And if you are wearing a t-shirt that you would like to share the story, please come up and sit in the front row. Then after we've sung the song, you guys can get up and speak into the microphone and uh, share the story of, of your t-shirt. I do have a couple rules. You need to state your name, describe your shirt, and then tell us why your shirt is meaningful. Refrain from other, using other people's names. I used my brother's name, Jeff, because you guys will never meet him. Uh, remember, you are being recorded. Don't reference politicians by name or situation. And most importantly, have some fun. We may need to limit your time, depending on how long you guys talk. Kathy? There we go. Okay. Testing, I forgot to make sure this was on. Is this on? Okay, we gotta have some microphone. Colin, here? Check, check. I guess that's as good as it goes. Okay. <laughs> Wine. Sing joy to the world. 
wanted me to share her t-shirt. It's for an initiative she's very proud to volunteer for, and it's the Tree Planting Initiative. <laughs> now, I think we'll start at this end. Bill, you want to come up and share your t-shirt and what it means to you? I'm Bill Kiefner. This is from the Sun Foundation, Art and Science in the Woods. I've been getting some nods here from Joe. It is a summer camp. Here comes Tech. Check something out. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Oh. Is a summer camp. That's so one we still know. Okay. Ah, yes. <laughs> I can hear. Uh, the summer camp uh, been going on since nineteen seventy three. Uh, runs a week from like nine to, and there are all kinds of classes in, it's called Art and Science in the Woods, and it's art and science and nature and culture and survival. Uh, my part of that, oh, uh, and they had some really great instructors. I worked mainly with, uh, Merrill Foster, Dr. Merrill Foster was a geology professor at Bradley. Uh, I also got to work with Michael Wyant, who was the archaeologist, big archaeologist in Illinois, who taught classes there. Preston Jackson was there. Uh, Joe Lakota was there teaching, and Brian Fox Ellis uh, was there. So they had some really great instructors for this period. Uh, I worked with Merrill Foster. And he, we did fossil stuff. I have my fossils. <laughs> and you wouldn't think there were fossils in Illinois, and you could go over the same place for six years in a row and still find more fossils. <laughs> and they, Merrill, had done this for about 40 years, ever since almost the beginning of it. Uh, so it was a great experience for me and for my grandkids. I had lots of fun, and like all these things, you learn more than the kids do, right? Yeah. Uh, after the first year, I went on the internet and got my pictures of all the different fossils and what we were looking for, and you know, so I could really kind of be up on it. Uh, a, a good week for all of us. Okay, I'm Kathy McNeil, and my t-shirt says just about it all, that I believe everybody here 
uh, knows the importance of voting to get your uh, word out to our representatives. And of course, um, we, we know what's happened and we want to mainly consider that um, how we feel and um, what we think, we need to be able to say it and print it and uh, respond to it. And of course, um, we know about how important Black Lives Matter or any, anything to deal with um, addressing racism. Um, and of, of course, women's rights, women's reproductive rights. We have for the T, the uh, women's reproductive organs. <laughs> and then on the uh, letter E, LGBTQ plus and trans, um, the importance of keeping their rights and their freedoms the way all of us have or the, all of us should have. So vote. I am not a t-shirt person. Um, haven't ever really gone out and done that. However, we put solar panels on our house a couple of years ago. And this, and it's from this company, which is the only reason I have this t-shirt. Um, and it says the future is bright. And I think that, I think that, ooh, I think that um, I have a very positive outlook on life and some people might think it's foolish, but I feel like if you continuously think of the future being bright, you will make the effort to make it be bright. And so the conservation part of this goes along with the UU. When my husband passed away here, going on 10 years now, um, we were putting solar panels on this building. On the, and so Jeanette Flint Gruber, who was a friend of mine, uh, said, you know, a good way to acknowledge his and my feelings about conservation is to help fund putting the solar panels on. So I did a matching deal with, uh, to help get the money for the solar panels. I also taught science in fifth grade. I was the kind of like science teacher. And we did units on conservation uh, way back, it's kind of dating me, but way back when. And the kids would actually be expected to create kind of a city on a map and implement what they learned about conservation in the design of their cities. So that's kind of like the future is bright. If you can get young folks interested in conservation, and there are so many ways, go down to the Forest Park Nature Preserve for one, and you'll just see all of the ways that we can keep our nature um, thriving right around us and putting solar panels and doing uh, all of those kinds of things on your homes help keep our environment there and make it bright. My name is Edward Flint. Uh, so my t-shirt says, uh, humankind, be both. And uh, so I teach chemistry at uh, Bradley. And one of the uh, aspects uh, people have about uh, teachers and chemistry teachers especially is that um, uh, the Pink Floyd song uh, involving dark sarcasm in the classroom seems to be uh, relevant for uh, people's attitude about chemistry teachers. Uh, I try to uh, work against that. I also like puns uh, and jokes, and puns are a way to, for us introverts to interact uh, with you extroverts uh, in a more uh, uh, natural way. So anyway, this incorporates a lot of things that I care about. I'm Judith Shanahan, and I've been a member of this church since 1980, and before that I was a Unitarian in Rockford from 65 until I moved here in 80. 
Um, I only have one shirt other than my, I have a, a, a sweatshirt with the Peoria UU name on it, but I don't have a collection of named sweatshirts. But this one, when I'm an old woman, I shall wear purple. <laughs> there was a poem that was quite popular, and a lot of you have heard the poem. And I got this shirt probably in, I don't know, 1990 or so, and have barely worn it. That's why the color stays so well. And as it turns out, in three more months, I will turn 87. And so now I think I really have to own this shirt. <laughs> I used to hear older people say, <clears throat> I no longer suffer fools. And I never quite understood that. Well, I'm at the age now where I totally agree with that. I no longer suffer fools. You don't get to be this old without gaining wisdom, education, learning from your own experiences, learning from your own mistakes. I've made my share of mistakes, but I think I've learned from most of them. And so if someone speaks something that I think is nonsense, I am no longer going to go, oh, hmm, and just ignore it. I will question them or I will counter what they are saying with what I know is to be factual and truth. And so um, all I can say is we need to keep strong, keep going as long as we can keep going. And I guess I'll just wear purple more often now. We are getting close to the 11.30 mark, so we need to speed it up a little bit. And this is my granddaughter, who I love and I'm very proud of. <laughs> uh, well, I'm Michaela Thomas, or Kayla Thomas, as my grandma calls me, or most of you call me. Uh, I, too, have an art and science in the woods camp. This year was the year of the cicadas, both the different type of Species of cicadas came out, and they were just so loud out in the woods. So I have my shirt that I bought for the people who are printing shirts there. It's a cicada. Yeah. <laughs> and then my friend who's running around here somewhere, uh, he's wearing a shirt from a concert we both went to New Year's Eve. I will talk fast. Now, you would keep wondering, what does football have to do with the UU Church? Let me explain. My favorite two teams are the Minnesota Vikings and whoever plays the Packers. <laughs> or I could have said the Bears. They have that too. I have been a Minnesota Viking fan ever since they were formed. They have been to the Super Bowl four times. They have never won. So my request is, using the power of being a UU member and using all the sources that we have available, I want all of us to think kind thoughts to empower the Vikings to win the Super Bowl <laughs> this year so that, oh no, so that when I die, I can die in peace and I can credit the UU Church. Hi, I'm Dave Drebner, and ever since I was little, I've loved the outdoors and nature. Joined the Sierra Club in 1976, went on many hikes uh, with them, and uh, eventually got a master's in environmental studies at the U of I Springfield. So my t-shirt, 
the tree represents that. Uh, and the yin-yang symbol uh, represents, well, back in the mid-'80s, I started found out about the church here, uh, the EU church, and so I started coming occasionally to the one on, when we were on Hamilton in downtown. And uh, uh, one, one, for several nights, there was uh, some guy, I don't remember who it was, but in, did, did a little Tai Chi instruction. And I re really, really worked for me. I loved it. And I've been doing Tai Chi now for like 40 years. Um, and it reflects my philosophy of the, 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 the Chinese symbol of the yin-yang, the, the importance of the balance between uh, masculine, feminine, the, uh, the embracing and the exploring. And, you know, not just physical gender, but, but those kind of concepts in, in everyday reality. So, uh, and I'm grateful to the Sierra Club to the, for hiking because uh, women kept telling me, take a hike, so I started. Hello, I am Regina Stanley. Um, and so my shirt, I got about four years ago, about the time I started, um, you know, I, I spent my whole life in Christian churches. Um, and uh, I got this when I started deconstructing my Christian faith. And um, so, you know, there were a lot of things in the Christian religion that didn't make sense to me, but it was always like, okay, well, it doesn't make sense, but it makes sense to everybody else. So someday maybe it'll make sense and just go with it. Um, but then I started, so, okay. So my shirt is by, I got all kinds of little fishes on here. If you can't see, it's kind of worn out because I wear it a lot. Um, and they all have exclamation marks on the fishes, except the one in the middle. And, and the one in the middle has a little question mark. And so this is by an artist named uh, David Hayward, um, also known as the Naked Pastor. Naked Pastor. <laughs> and so to me, it represents like not going with the flow and, and questioning things, which changed everything for me. And... Um, I will just close. I came across a quote the other day, and I was like, oh, yeah, so that, that makes sense. And it's um, a, a quote uh, from Bertrand Russell. And the quote is, the trouble with the world is that the stupid are cocksure and the intelligent are full of doubt. I think we are all very intelligent people. <laughs> Hi, hi, I'm Rachel Harrison, and this t-shirt is a t-shirt I designed for myself back in 19, uh, back in 2019, and I was working for, and I still am working for, a call center representative for FTD, the Nationwide Flower Delivery Network you probably heard of, and, you know, what it means that it is it's mercury strong, uh, and then the front says, taking customer service to the next level. I first designed this shirt, as I said, after I spent two years working for, uh, pro, for pro flowers, the simpler pro flower divisions of, of FTD. And the, because of my disability as um, high functioning autism, people thought that I probably, even though I'd had some call center experience, I'd never make it working for such a complex industry as a floral industry, because they say there's a lot of moving parts. Even the pro flowers, they thought it was too much for me. And they almost didn't hire me. I used legal aid at work to get hired. And I see it there for two years, and I designed this shirt to celebrate. Little did I know that shortly after I celebrated my two-year anniversary, FTD, the whole parent company, went bankrupt. We had to close down the San Diego Pro Flowers Call Center. They, trans they, they, they were impressed with me, so they transferred me over to the Chicago division of regular FTD. And I was thinking, you know, this Mercury Strong doesn't this stand for someone fighting to succeed at a job they said I'd never succeed at. 
but it also means that they that you know it's fighting for all those florists and the company as it goes through bankruptcy. Luckily, we survived. Many companies don't survive Chapter 11, and then later on, just after we emerged from bankruptcy in 2020, uh, we go into the COVID pandemic. You know, and COVID was a hard time for all industries, including the florist and gift industry. I mean, we were lucky we boomed during that time, but still it was challenging all those COVID restrictions. So I was thinking this logo really stand, I mean, this is the slogan, Mercury Strong, really stands for three battles that uh, I as a part of FTD was involved with. I'm Jack Ryan. I uh, was presented this shirt this is what a feminist looks like by, the, uh, by now. Uh, I guess I, I was uh, president of the Peoria Area Peace Network for a number of years. I couldn't get rid of the job, and finally we, we just died. But uh, it was presented for uh, our work and, uh, and women's issues that women are actually fully human being, and it's kind of a secret for a long time. Thank you. <laughs> I'm Sonia Gravatt, and this shirt is from the Blues Heritage Festival when I was on the staff there. This was uh, from 2017, they told me, so I think that was the first year that I also was on the staff of uh, the Summer Camp Music Festival, the one that happens uh, uh, in Chillicothe. Um, and I did that for five or six years. And if you see any shirt with staff on it, they were free. So I have several of those. <laughs> and um, also, you know that both me and Sally uh, love live music. So if you don't have anything to do today, at 2 o'clock on the North Branch Library, there's a bluegrass band for free. And tonight, the uh, Central Illinois Jazz Society has Dave Hoffman and Friends. Um, that is, that's at the Trailside Event Center, which is above Treskers in Peoria Heights. So hope to see some of you there. Pardon? Um, it's, if you're a member, it's $8. And if you're not a member, it's $12. Okay. <laughs> Hey y'all, my name is Jamie Harold, and I am a recovering Pentecostal Christian of 15 years. And I do not have that t-shirt that I used to have anymore. Uh, on the front was written, it's either God's way or the highway, and then there was a little, little caption with a scripture written on it below it that, that was talking about hell. I don't know what that scripture was, I don't remember it, I don't care to, but you know what? We all have our higher powers to serve us as a guide on whatever walk of life, whatever, whatever our walk of life may be. Don't we all have our higher power to guide us on our way of life? Well, um, you know what? This is what I personally believe. I, it, this, my thing for me is that hell, I don't believe in hell, at least not anymore. You know, I believe that hell is nothing more than a scare tactic Used by some, used by some religions to convert people, to scare people, to intimidate people, into believing whatever it is that they believe. And to me, if you have to scare people and intimidate people to believe what you believe, then uh, you have something weighing very heavy on your heart that you might want to take a look at. You are seriously wounded if if you're gonna do something like that. But that's just, that's just my thing for me. So you know what? It's not about who's right or wrong. It's trying our best to get along. Peace out, y'all. <laughs> And 
That's a narrow passage there. I, I just grabbed the first t-shirt I could find this morning. I had a lot of ideas. This is a Return to Pima Twee shirt. How many of you remember Return to Pima Twee? Okay, for 20 some years, this was a big powwow held here in Peoria, uh, mostly out at Sumner Park. And we had native people come from, we had Aztec dancers from South America, we had uh, Tinklet people come from Alaska, we had people from, we had a black drum come from Cherokee Nation on the East Coast, we had people come from the West Coast, everywhere. It was a big powwow and a great celebration of Native American culture. And that ran for 20 some years and uh, uh, sponsored by the Peoria Park District. So that was uh, quite wonderful. Um, just to celebrate that. And so, so, and I used to come in from New Mexico for that, but uh, just to continuing supporting my culture, which I can do through this church. And uh, one of the downfalls of Pimitui was people trying to turn it, uh, our drum circle, our dance circle into a, have a Christian service there. And the traditional people said, hey, wait a minute. You know what? You got every Sunday. Let us have this one, please. So um, things like that happen, but you continue to fight uh, for <clears throat> uh, native culture is a complete thing within itself. So I'm thankful for this church. I don't live with my tribe or my adopted tribe, <clears throat> but I'm sure glad I got people here to come that understand to honor the earth and understand the things that uh, indigenous people hold dear. So thanks all of you. the microphone now. Okay, I'll be really brief. I'm, I'm new here, but um, I uh, was uh, a member with my children a long time ago. Um, my t-shirt uh, is a gift. Um, that's all I have to say about that, but um, I wanted to say thank you. Um, you're all a gift to me. Um, my, but the reason I jumped up here was because my Uncle Les was uh, the founder of that powwow, one of the founders. I kind of like giving the service this way. I got a nice rest over there. <laughs> uh, I have a t-shirt I'd like to show you, or not show you, tell you about. Uh, Gina is wearing a t-shirt today about trees. Why are trees important to me? Trees give us oxygen to breathe, shade to shelter, fruit to eat, and wood for fuel. They remind us of the connectedness of everything with their roots reaching down and branches reaching up and out. In the presence of a tree, I sense the energy of the universe verse flowing through. Trees give us life. Thank you all. I hope you've enjoyed this service. I wasn't sure how it was going to turn out, and it only was a success because you guys all contributed. Now, could you please join in singing our closing hymn, 126, Come Thou to have Every Blessing.
I'd like to invite Taylor to come up and extinguish our chalice for us. <clears throat> Like the flame of the chalice, may the flame in our hearts burn, remaining unextinguished. May it ignite our energies, our drive, our resolve, to dream, to build, and to live into the world that good which exists for now only comes in our imaginings. Go out now with hearts and hands and minds renewed to the world that is waiting for you. Go out to that world to bring your gentle touch to those in pain. Go out to feed and house those in need. Go out to speak truth to those in power. Go out with courage to do the work which calls you. Go out now with passion and faith to change the world. So be it. 